Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Fates Quickies. Today we will be doing chapter 1, our obligatory Rainbow Sage chapter with knowledge of the map theme. Not that I'm really complaining that map theme slaps. Unlike in Birthright, this map isn't just one really big joke, but unlike in Revelation, you don't get to recruit any new units on the map itself. This is just a map. Now, it might seem a bit daunting to uh, attack this map at first when you see skills like counter and life and death on the enemies, some poison strikes, and uh, a bunch of really weird skills like uh, but like winged shield on Hinoka. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually not that hard if you have a strategy planned. And uh, our strategy is, is segmented and we've actually made a more specific strategy, but uh, a more general strategy that works for this map is just throwing Camilla at the problem. Um, Camilla, we haven't gotten that much of a chance to talk about her until now, um, because we were more concerned with surviving Chapter 10, but uh, now that we have the time, uh, let's talk about her. Camilla is the best unit in Conquest, um, by a, by a decent margin, not an insane margin, a decent margin. Uh, she has great stats, joins really early, she's in a broken-ass class, Malignite gets Trample eventually, or you can just reclass her into a Wyvern Lord to get more physical stats, or you can just have her use some magical tomes if you stack her properly and just kill shit for free. Um, she, she has great growths even, and her bases, as I mentioned, are just insane. Like her, this, we've had some augmentations to her base stats, which I'll discuss soon, but uh, still, even without those, her bases are insane. Uh, let's move on to our preparations. Between last chapter and this chapter, we got 10k gold to do whatever we wanted to do with. We sold Camilla's garbage steel axe, first of all, and we bought the following. We bought four bronze axes and forged them into the neuron activation for Camilla. It's, uh, if, that's a re if you get the reference, then uh, good on you. We bought a hand axe for Camilla. The hit rates are going to be a bit shaky, but right now her strength, her pair up is going to be giving her strength, and her strength is going to be more reliable. Uh, and if we want to do magical damage instead of doing physical damage, we can. There's a much more reliable, uh, well, not much more reliable. It's just as reliable as the hand axe. Uh, a much more damaging option uh, after chapter 13. Uh, we also uh, bought four bronze bows and forged them into the uh, quote-unquote steel bow plus two. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna confuse myself one of these days with these names and fuck up on preparation somehow. But you know what? It's worth the joke. Uh, the, now, people that know how this game works will know that these both these weapons have the same hit, uh, same might, and the bronze bow just has way more hit. Uh, now, the reason that I actually have both of these is because we're going to need this bronze bow plus two for our chapter 13 clear. Uh, so, and because we have money to burn, I decided to just buy it now. Uh, I also forged Camilla's, uh, br uh, Camilla's, uh, Thunder Tome along with Odin's th uh, Thunder Tome to turn it into the Bolt, the movie. The one with the dog that cares about... Uh, you've probably never seen it. Anyways, uh, I also forged Baruka's Iron Axe along with, uh, Arthur's existing Iron Axe and turned it into the Just Hit Forehead. Along with that, I renamed, uh, Felicia's, uh, Tome into the Knowledge because she... Is, she's using such a cheap tone. She doesn't care about materialistic things like Lamborghinis, you know. She wants knowledge. Anyways, uh, let's get started with this map. Uh, I have bought a bunch of tonics, but all that information can be found in the description. Alright, let's move on. So, normally on maps like this where you have two paths that you can approach to uh, accomplish your objective, in this case, kill boss, uh, splitting up is usually a bad idea. But since we have the, uh, we have the advantage of my galaxy brain, and also, uh, you know, simple planning on our uh, side, we can actually uh, approach this properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to move Odin to the stairs, dance for him. Just let him move clo further into this room. We're going to move him into the room, equip the Nosferatu tome. Then what we're going to do, oh, make sure to turn on enemy ranges. Oh, also, I need to turn off animations. Move Silas over here into the staircase and then uh, switch to Effie. Next up. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be carrying Corrin with Felicia. Felicia is going to go into here. We're going to stand here, and then we're going to swap back to Corrin and put the Iron Club stuff. Now, Camilla is going to uh, also go into this room and uh, stand right next to Corrin so that she can give him uh, access to her personal, Rose's Thorns, which allows Corrin to deal three more damage, which, along with the two damage he gets from Felicia's personal, uh, makes it so that he does, uh, 29 damage. 29 damage, more than enough to kill these guys with two hits, considering that our Corrin doubles. So, uh, yeah, let's just move over here. And let's move Niles to this pile. Now, all these enemies are going to attack Odin. If you look at the sets and the speed, you would think that she would double Odin, but the Steel Short Bow actually makes it harder for you to double, so... That's why we're able to uh, get away with this strategy. 
this is typically how Nosferatu tanking goes. You're taking a bunch of enemies, you're taking more damage than you're healing back, but eventually you get a shield gauge, and that just lets you heal the damage back without taking any more. And we're going to get attacked, and we're going to absolutely body these Oni Savages. However, uh, both uh, Rinka and the la uh, Rinka, the 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 ninja and the last Oni Savage are uh, not in range, and the ninja is going to hit us with seal speed, which might seem like that a bit of a detriment, but we're already like we're already almost halfway done with this chapter. It's 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 very fast if you can get through it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move Elise in here, and we're going to try to attack one of the people that's in range of Odin's Heartseeker. Uh, since uh, Setsuna actually doubles Effie when she has the Javelin equipped, and also uh, deals a bunch more damage than the others, we're going to be killing Setsuna. Uh, remember that the enemies in this room have counters, so if you attack them with at one range with anything, then they're going to, uh, uh, then it's not going to be a fun time for you. We're just going to leave all these units here. Uh, actually, sorry, uh, my mistake. We're going to be moving Odin to this tile so that they're disinclined to uh, attack him. Then, what we're going to do is we're going to be setting up a kill. Uh, since Odin actually can't double uh, double Rinka because unlike the regular Oni Savages, Rinka has actual stats, uh, we're just gonna throw Camilla at our problems. We're going to then uh, we're going to then have Arthur throw himself at this uh, ninja. Uh, the main reason is so we can work on some more supports and then we can finally take care of this guy using our uh, steel bow and uh, getting Camilla's personal action. Then we're going to go here, we're going to go here, and then we're finally going to switch to Felicia, because this room is full of magic users and one archer that Felicia can easily take out uh, on player phase at one range, because he doesn't have counter. If you wanted to, you could also just move Odin uh, back down and then back up next turn. Uh, but though the strategy is a bit more risky, uh, it pays off for us. We're going to take this ball Mary and then we're going to kill up Odin. Now, we're going to swap out Silas this turn. Next turn, we're going to pair him, put him here with a sword, and then we're going to bait this Oni Savage. We're going to kill him, and then uh, and then after that, Epi is going to be easily able to take out all of these ninjas. Azura continues her journey up this uh, up the staircase. Now, we're going to pair her up with Arthur so we can get him some more movement. We're now going to transfer her over to Camilla so we can get even more movement. And then we're going to move uh, Niles over here. Our next uh, our next play is to check... Uh, just quickly check how much damage. Uh, yeah, none of these guys do any damage to Felicia, so we're free to attack this guy. We'll take a bunch of damage in return, uh, but we'll still be fine. If that guy activated uh, Miracle... Uh, that this is not as uh, reliable of a play as you really want it to be because he can activate miracle but uh, still this is the best uh, this is still a pretty good play now these guys do no damage so even with a and uh, with the hexing rod hit felicia really just doesn't care um this room is going to be absolutely dismantled by felicia uh that guy activated miracle it's not too much of a big deal they're up here move over here and we're going to equip the iron sword bait this guy this guy the reason we're baiting him is because uh the best uh unit we have to take care of this room is uh is effie because effie actually has uh d rank lances and can use a javelin uh so and this guy has a hammer to dis disincentivize that but uh if you check the ranges of the ninjas you can see none of them can attack this tile uh so we can just bait this guy next turn we can swap to effie and kill them all Effie takes absolutely no damage on this stairs tile because she has a bunch of defense and also she gets uh, na uh, natural cover.
sorry about that pause. Uh, important thing to note when you're fighting Azama is that he has Divine Retribution and also Counter. So attacking him at one range means that you're going to take 1.5 times the amount of damage you would normally, uh, that you would deal to him. So just attack him at two range and you'll be fine. Alright. Oh, sorry. Ah, silly miracle. Oh well. Just attacking with that neuron activation. Finally, we can just uh, mop uh, Kaze up. Now, since we our hit rates aren't that great, we can just bring Odin in here to activate Harsito. And uh, though he'll advantage us, he'll still die. Now, this this chest uh, has a Spirit Dust, which is pretty important for either Odin or Leo. Uh, the way things are going, I think the, uh, the person we're going to give that to is Leo, because our Odin is shit. Uh, this chest has an enfeeble staff, which we're going to be able to get immediately. Um, but the the way we're going to get to this chest is we're going to be taking care of this room with Camilla, and then after that we're going to be doing that. Let's open up the chest, get the enfeeble staff, and up Camilla. Now, separate. Let's pair up Arthur here. That entire room, uh, you really want to have the dual club equipped, so... I've used both the bone wires. Alright. If you stay out of the range of the ninja, then uh, you'll be fine. But uh, it's often nice to take care of this guy. However, he does do 20 damage, and we have 17 res. Um, and that would be 18, 19. It, he does very little damage, so it's not that important to keep him in mind, really. Uh, but either way, these guys are going to attack us here and then lunge us over. Uh, which isn't quite going to put us in range, so we'll be fine. So that, those are the guys with the uh, armor blow, and they won't be able to uh, they won't be able to uh, be killed in one hit because they're fast, and also they have armor blow, as previously mentioned. Now the this this room, I did say that it's fodder for Camilla, but uh, it's often just fodder for her when she has uh, w w when she can just run through and go to the boss. Uh, in our case, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do a bit of a cheeky strat. I was just demonstrating how it works. So we're going to be transferring Niles over there instead of Arthur. And then we're going to be... Soon we're going to have Camilla... Yeah, and then we're going to move Camilla over here. And then we're going to separate Niles out. As you can see, she has the movement to get through. But uh, we're going to have Niles... Take this chest, grab the item inside. Here we have pair up with Camilla. Head over here. Transfer back. Wait. Go here. Transfer Camilla yet again. And head through here. First. None of the enemies in this room move, so they're not that threatening. Uh, Hinoka has winged shield, so you can't actually uh, deal uh, effective damage to her because be if sh you're dealing effective damage to her because of her being a flyer. If, for example, you have a hunter's knife or something, you can still deal effective damage to her because she's technically a beast unit. Um, now, before I uh, leave this chapter, uh, some if for some reason you're hurting on units for what, uh, though you really shouldn't be. This is around the point in the game when deployment starts to get really hard to figure out. Um, uh, the life and death guys and the lunge armor blow guys are pretty good capture targets. Lunge armor blow guys especially because even you can bring them into a late game chapter where you need some enemy moved out of the way and you can uh, lunge armor blow the guy, not die, and then swap spaces and then get out of the way in time. As you can see, Camilla just absolutely bodies her. As we can see, Camilla loves killing her enemies, but she also loves absolutely trash talking Hinoka. And that's the end of our chapter. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Leave a comment if you want. Uh, if you have any suggestions for what I can do to improve my content, uh, or if you want to see some kind of new content, uh, join the Discord if you want to see notifications for when these videos go live. The Discord link is in the notifications below. Uh, have a good day. Bye.